Welcome to Flux Effects Tutorials. Today we're going to focus on using the alpha channel to create dynamic masks in uh, third party uh, software such as uh, Adobe After Effects or Nuke or any of those other software. So um, what we're going to do is if you look we've got the export alpha video only option and and that allows us to create a mask and, and we'll see the benefits of that as, as, as we go forward and, it, and it's really good when you're wanting to add effects in from other software into the uh, your creations in iClone. So as you can see here we've kind of got a uh, medieval uh, walled city that we created and um, this is just kind of bits and pieces of a uh, short film we're working on and it's got some magical elements and in this particular case We've got a situation where we're going to have a moving camera. We've got uh, some complex uh, geometries. We've got uh, a flag in the background that's uh, blowing in the wind. And we actually have some peasants that will be running across the front of the camera. So you can kind of see here everything going. Uh, and on this video, we're only going to focus on the, uh, the benefits of using the uh, alpha channel. So I won't go into how to set up the physics for the flag or or animating the characters or any of that so um, so anyway so we've got the video here uh, let's change to the camera view so here's the camera setup that I'm using and you can see everything's turned on and you can see the the equipment and the uh, characters moving and animating and this will be the scene it's short about 400 frames um, and uh, the um, Let's let's look here and, and again here we go. So you can see like the flags moving. So uh, there's no ability to do masking, so you can't really bring in these effects. And you'll see them when we get in into iClone. You've got to bring iClone out and add the effects on the back end. Again, uh, I'll be using After Effects and to uh, create any kind of a dynamic mask is a lot of work. Again, there's a lot of sharp edges, so these alpha channels will uh, will allow us to do that. And, um, and it's not really an alpha channel. It's more of a, alpha, a video that we can use to create an alpha with. Um, so let's move forward here. And we've got the camera set up. Um, we've got everything turned on. Show you something here. One of the um, options that you might think you could do is, well, I'll just do multiple passes. And with PNG sequences, Etc. That this is create uh, capable of creating. You can layer one uh, one layer of uh, animation on top of the other. Well, the problem with that is really it has to do with your lighting and your dynamic shadows, and and, and I'll demonstrate that a little bit here. So you might think, well, I, I'll go ahead and do a render pass without the characters running, without the flag, without the uh, the statue out front, the fountain. And then I'll run one where I'll get rid of the background. And what 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 generally happens is then we lose the shadows. It's not set up in here. Let me turn some things off and show you what I'm talking about. So we'll go ahead and turn off. And you'll notice I've got these things all grouped under dummy objects, so I can turn things off in mass. Uh, there's a couple thousand objects uh, in this, and it'd be a real pain in the the rear. So. So let's go ahead and turn the rest of this off and I'll show you my point. So you can see here we have the characters, but of course we lose the shadows. So even if uh, I turn the shadow catcher on, we're still not going to get the shadows. So running a pass and then if there's any walls or anything affecting the lighting, those are now turned off and you could have problems getting the lighting to look right when you're layering everything on top. So that's why we don't do that. Um, we want the sh we want to take advantage of the, the lighting and the dynamic lighting with everything moving and we want it to look as, as, as realistic as, as, as we can. Um, and so again, like if we turn off the stables, you can see where the shadows go off. So we, we, we lose the shadows and a lot of the lighting if we try and just layer things. Now, you could creatively work with selective lighting that, that eliminates some of this. But, but again, that makes it hard, especially with the fact that we really can't do any masks with, uh, 
within uh, within uh, iClone. So it's it's a it's a 3D animation software. It's not designed for that. So we have After Effects, which is created to do just that. So again, we'll render out this video, uh, set it up for MP4, um, 30 frames a second, 1080p. Um, we'll set for final render, uh, set your range. Uh, when you've got your camera, don't accidentally move it or keyframe it because it's very important through the process that your alpha video matches the exact movements that are already captured in your base video. So we'll go ahead and export the uh, base video and just click on export. We'll export the range, uh, base tutorial. Uh, I've already exported this one. It's just kind of gone through it for practice, uh, but we'll go ahead and do another one. And we'll drop out here and come back after it's rendered. Uh, it takes a few minutes. Then um, we're back once it's done. And um, let's find where I put the video and I'll show you what it looks like. Here we go, where is it? There we go. And I like to use the VLC media player just because it's quick. And you can see, and again, you see a lot of movement. People are running and forward, back and forth, the flag's moving, and we're gonna wanna put those effects back behind a lot of those, those, those characters and that movement, so that'll be important. So the next thing we have to do is we're gonna create our, uh, our, our alpha. And to do that, we have to start turning things off. And because it's, it's gonna create a black and white video, and we're gonna use anything that's black, to um, not, it doesn't create a transparency, but anything that's that's black on the video will show through. Anything that's white will be masked out. So, so let's go through and start turning things off, and um, just to make it easier. And you'll notice I did put it back in preview before I started moving things around, and now I'll start turning things off. So I've got the walls off, um, got the um, different accessories. We'll turn all those. Off, turn to stable, you see we lose the shadow, but that's not important for what we're doing here. Make sure you turn off your sky and any terrain you have. Um, if you leave the sky on, it will not create the alpha correctly. Um, now I've got this thing, so let's turn, let's see. Let's come over here, There's where's the shops? There's the shop, so let's turn the shops off. And we've got some, we still have some more modifications to make. So um, we want to make sure that when, as the camera moves around, that nothing, it doesn't create a, it doesn't show anything that we, we don't want to use to mask out our, because uh, what we're trying to do is we're going to, we're going to position our, our effects within that arch. And we want to make sure it looks as natural as possible. So let's turn off the arch and start turning some things back on. So I want the, the flag to be there. Obviously, that's dynamically done. And you can see I just use soft call off so I don't have to keep recreating the physics. That's very important so that it reacts the same each time, especially because we want the alpha to match the, the actual flag movement. So let's turn on. Let's find the other leg. There it is. And then I want to turn on the arch. So... When I turn on the arch, it creates a problem, right? You can see the depth there. And since anything is going to mask out, it, it doesn't have, it's not placed in 3D space. So when you, where you see the, the, the rear of the arch, that creates a little bit of a problem. So what we want to do is we want to make that uh, a lot thinner. So again, we're, we're using these to create masks so that it'll give the illusion of the effects being located within the arch. So I can take the along the x-axis and I'm going to scale that down about 5%. Slide this on over so that it lines up with the front of the two posts. And here you go. And make sure it lines up with the front of the flag. You can see the, uh, the support on the flag right against the, the posts there. So that's perfect. So that's what you need. So now it will, when we create the alpha, we'll get the effect we want. And let's see. Okay, I like that. Let's turn the ground off. 
um, if we leave the ground on same thing it won't it won't work right so now we've turned the ground off um, and turn the fountain back on and then the camera okay so if you think in terms of just the video now you'll see this is our we want our effect to be laying behind this part of the scene and so we'll create the alpha to do that and then we'll be able to track it into um, into Adobe After Effects and have it uh, create the effect as we kind of show, showed here in the beginning. So let's go to render. Again, make sure camera's on. Haven't moved anything. Uh, we're going to export the alpha video only. Um, 30 frames a second, still high def, everything's the same. All the settings are the same on the render. The range is the same. Make sure that your start and end frames are, are, are the same as the other video. Click export. And let's send the bit alpha out. And click on save. And now we're now we've um, we're back, and um, here's what the uh, the alpha video will look like. And there we go. So you can see the uh, the video. And again, now we get all the movement. Everything's captured in a black and white image, and it will line up with perfectly with the video. And we can use that to again create the illusion of uh, depth within our. Uh, and these are not depth maps, but it allows us to to show things behind um, certain objects and without uh, creating. And I'll, I'll show you here in a minute. Let's hop into, in fact, let's just hop straight into After Effects. So I've already pull, pulled the two videos in, the alpha and the base, and uh, just put it on half speed so it'll move a little quicker, or half resolution, excuse me. And you can see the same video that we just saw, flags moving, cameras, folks are running. And I did some tracking for these effects we're going to be putting in just uh, for placement. Um, the first thing is just an energy ball. And I've just tracked it in so that it'll uh, track to the uh, middle of the arch. And you can see it moving and... And it's right now it's just laying in front of everything. Uh, it's not shown. And normally what we would do is we'd turn it off and we'd start drawing masks around everything. And I'm going to do this real quick and sloppy, obviously, if, if I was trying to make, make this uh, be a final, final video, I would uh, put a lot more points and uh, spend a lot more time. But I just want to make a point here. If we, if we went with a conventional method, we would, we would use multiple masks and we would mask all the different moving parts. And you can see it, it's going to... It, it's a lot of work. It takes a lot of time, and and if you wanted to make it look good, um, let's select our masks, subtract, and, uh, and as you can already see, you would need multiple masks: one for the characters that are running across the front, one for the columns. Um, we'd have to come in here and try and feather the mask so that it would uh, look a little better. Um, and there's a little gap right here, which we would have to create another mask for. We put that one on add, so it would would show the show the energy um, ball through there, and come back, and we would do a uh, hit M and uh, pull up mask path, and and we'd go ahead and animate the mask. And I'm just going to jump out to a second. Again, we'd have to probably move two, three frames at a time because there's a lot, a lot of movement going on here, or we'd have to simplify the, um, the scene um, so that there was less movement to make it, to make it easier. And you know, if you use the tools that you've been given, you don't have to make it easier. You can actually make it as complex as you want, and just use the tools. And this is, as you're going to see, the the method we're going to show is is real easy. So. You know, and I'm just going to walk this through, keep moving um, all the uh, the mask around, and you can see when you have a lot of movement. Now, just making sure everything lines up correctly, or you know, is more and more difficult. So you have to, you know, possibly go one or two frames at a time, and 
you have several hundred frames here, even on a small scene, you could spend a couple of hours. And it took to render the alpha five minutes to create it and render it. So, so real pain in the butt here. So let's get rid of those. Let's uh, delete these masks and I'll show you how to, by just simply using the track mats that just create it a lot easier. So we're gonna go ahead and pull in the, uh, the alpha video that we created. As you can see, it's just a black and white video. And we're gonna use that to essentially mask out the, uh, the parts of the energy ball that we don't, that we don't wanna see. The, now you'll notice I turned off the other layers. I want to show you this is not a video with alpha. It isn't what they're calling an alpha video. It's not true alpha. So there is no transparency in this video. And because of that, when we use our track mats, we won't use the alpha track mat because there is no alpha. We, we'll, we'll key on Luma. We'll key on light. Um, as you can see, it doesn't do anything um, when we use the alpha. So wrong thing here. So by using Luma... A Luma mask is, in essence, uh, Luma mat, I should say. It'll create a mask. So there we go. So now you can start seeing um, the flag and, and the post. Let's let's go ahead and turn on the, the video behind it now. And look at that. Just that quickly, the, um, the ball of energy now is shown behind there. So again, everything that's white is masked out. Everything that's black is left in the video. And we just use by using the Luma track mat. And so let's run through it, and you can see now the ball fits perfectly and looks like it's it's located in the center of the arch. And um, it was just that easy. Um, no masks had to be created. Um, we just used the, the alpha channel. So very simple, very quick. Uh, just some creative thinking up front. When you're an iClone or whatever software you're using to... to to animate in or whatever software you're using to create. So again, no no track mat, back to Luma invert it. So created some other things here. Um, oh, just to make a point, if you use Luma, then everything that's white will, will show through and everything that's black will uh, be masked out. So I created uh, some additional effects. So here is a, an energy effect and I mask this in. Uh, it has to do with what I was trying to do with Sabre um, to get a particular effect with Sabre. So I, I masked around the outline of the uh, arch um, because I wanted that thing like filled with, with, with an energy. And um, but again, I don't want to really have to focus on all the different moving parts. I just wanted to focus on the arch. So, so very quickly, I did uh, a mask around the arch and then got what I wanted. And now I'll come in here uh, and I'll use my uh, same thing, our Luma Invert it. And look at that, just that quickly now that moves behind. And you can see, I, I'll slow it down here, and you can see how it absolutely looks like it's behind all the characters. Now, if you have bright lights or you want it to glow, for example, um, you can use lights within um, within the uh, iClone to, to create lighting effects and, and glow around the sides of the characters uh, to complement these scenes. But, but again, this is more focused on just the use of the alpha video. So... So now I did the same thing, turned on an optical flare to give it a little light in the center, and I uh, brought in the, uh, as you saw, I brought in the alpha again, Luma Invert it, and it shows the uh, optical flare, drops it in behind the, the flag, and, and it's, and it's uh, masked out by the movement of the, uh, of the uh, statue and, and the people running across it. So pretty straightforward. Very simple, just think in terms of what you're trying to do with your final video, what effects you're gonna add. Use the alpha video to export, so you export your regular video, then you export your alpha video. And this, what I'm showing here, because as we went through with the lighting and all, a PNG sequence would not have accomplished this. So, so it is very important that um, 
you use the alpha video when it's necessary and the PNG sequence when you just need a transparency and you're going to throw a sky or something in the background or, or, or some scenery. Um, so, and last thing I did, add an adjustment layer, add some contrast to bring out the colors a little more. And as you can see, you know, that's all it took. And, and it's... Um, very straightforward, very quick. So hopefully this video was helpful and uh, have a great day.